Pascal Corti is a professor of economics at the University of Victoria and joins us now. Thank you so much. But talk to us first, basically, how does dynamic pricing work? Is it simply supply and demand? It's exactly that. Uh, it's, it's very important when uh, you don't really know what the demand is going to be or when the demand changes a lot, like for airlines. Do you think that in this context, this supply and demand dynamic pricing is fundamentally unfair on the consumer? I think what's unfair on consumers is not telling consumers what exactly is going to happen. If you're going to have, if you decide to set a fairly low price and there's massive demand, then you have to organize a fair lottery and you have to explain how this lottery is going to take place. And you have to make sure that there is no resale, which means that you have to have a secondary identification when people enter the venue to make sure that the people who bought the ticket are the people who actually attend. If you use dynamic pricing, then you should explain exactly how it's going to happen and making consumer wait and then jack up the price is just not the right way to do it. I would imagine uh, the other side of the argument is you can't predict how high the price will go because to demand you can never be totally sure. Um, and also, if we think of buying from a tout, they push up the prices, they get the profit, the musicians don't get the profit. Is this a way of trying to squeeze the touts out of the market and will it work? It could be a way to do that, but, but it's, some, some artists actually want to sell at a fairly low price and keep the tout of the, out of the picture. And so the way to do it is to have a fair lottery with secondary identification, like we just said, and it's the role of Ticketmaster to make that happen. And that's missing in the market. Now, if you, if, you, if you really want to charge the high price, then you should be upfront about that. You, you, setting a low price and then moving it up, it's, it's really not the way to do it. In, in concert, the, there is not that much uncertainty to double the price, right? There's very good, you can uh, use lots of uh, past concerts, you know how much interest there is in the concert, and, and there's no need to, to, to increase the price at the last minute. So what are the solutions here? Because we are seeing that Britain is now going to look into this. Um, we are seeing that the EU is also monitoring it. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, some countries have actually clamped down on it. So what do you think is the fairest way to proceed? And I'm thinking primarily of the consumer here. So exactly. So the, 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 the best way to proceed is to have uh, uh, better industry practices. Um, so there's been a lot of steps that have been taken to... Uh, prevent resale for profits when uh, it's uh, done by touts that basically invest in uh, robots, in, in bots, to grab the tickets and sell them for profits. So this is fairly well taken care of now. Enforcement is an issue. And also you need more transparency on the seller side. What, what most people don't know is, is for these large concerts, even when there's a posted price, you don't know how many tickets are available at that price. And, and it's well known in the industry that a lot of tickets are set aside and sold in the secondary market. Uh, and so, the, again, the, the consumer is fooled because you, the consumer is told prices will be at that price. And now the problem is not that we increase the price, but the problem is that few tickets are actually available at that price and, and many tickets show up directly in the secondary market. So there is a complete lack of transparency. We have a situation where there's little innovation because there's a dominant firm and, and that's part of the problem. You need more innovation. You need to allow more entry in the market.